All right, you guys, welcome to class. My name is Teacher Chad. Uh, this hour, we're going to look at uh, some sentence structure quizzes. Okay, so we'll be uh, going through uh, uh, as, as many questions as we can go through, really. Um, uh, take a look at uh, the, the questions and uh, see which, which answer best finishes the, uh, the uh, sentence, okay? Um, now, uh, I, like to, I like to make it a, uh, a, uh, a class where we all participate, so um, when it's your turn, you'll be able to read through the, uh, the question or the, the sentence and choose which answer you believe it is. Um, then I'll ask the rest of the class to see if they agree with you or not. Okay, uh, so that's what uh, that's what we're going to be doing this hour. Uh, let's see who we have in class so far. Hi there, Nacho. How are you? Hello, Chad. I'm very well. How, how, how about you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Hello. Nice to have you here. Nice to have you here, Joe. Very cool. Let's see. How about Eric? Hi, Eric. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, Eric, where are you from? I'm from the Congo. From the Congo. I would have guessed by your picture here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice nice to have you here in class. Thank you. OK, how about uh, Edith? Hi there. How are you? Hi, teacher. I'm fine. I'm so glad to see to hear you again. Yes, I'm, I'm glad to have you back in class. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Let's see here. We also have Amparo. Hi there, Amparo. Welcome to class. OK. I uh, can't hear you so much right now, Amparo. Uh, take a look at your, uh, at your settings. Uh, how about Federico? How you doing, Federico? Welcome. Hello. I'm fine. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, good to have you back in class. And let's see here. There we go. Okay. Uh, we also have Tarek. Hi there, Tarek. Welcome to class. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Nice to have you here. Nice to see you. And let's try Amparo one more time. Hi there, Amparo. Hello. Welcome. There you are. Now I can hear you. Okay. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you here. Good to see you. All right. Okay. All right, you guys. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. All right. So, um, for those of you who have not been here before, okay, when it is your turn, you get to read the read the sentence. Okay. Uh, then choose which answer you believe it is. Okay, I will then go through and read whatever answer you think it is and then ask the rest of the class if they agree with you. Okay, uh, uh, wait for me to, uh, to finish reading before, before you answer. Okay, I'll ask for your answers and then you can either say uh, I agree or you can tell me which number you believe it is. Okay, uh, there, there isn't a need to uh, repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Uh, I, uh, I will try and make the distinction between all of the voices. Okay. Uh, very nice. So let's start off with Amparo on the uh, left-hand side. Go ahead, number one, please. The fragrances of many natural substances come from oils. Um, these oils may be used in manufacturing perfu perfumes. Um, <coughs> letter D, N. Okay. All right. Let's try it out. Uh, the fragrances of many natural substances come from oils, and these oils may be used in manufacturing perfumes. Okay, what do you guys think? Is our answer D, and? Yes, I agree with someone. Okay, anybody else? D. I agree too. B, B from? Okay, from? Okay, so I have two on D, one on B. Okay, anybody else? Okay, let's try out from. Okay, from sounds like this. Um, the fragrances of many natural substances come from oils. From these oils may be used in manufacturing perfumes. Okay, and D again is 
The fragrances of many natural, natural substances come from oils, and these oils may be used in manufacturing perfumes. Okay, anybody want to change their answer? Okay, our answer is D. Okay, D. Now, if you want to use from, okay, you could say from these oils are, uh, let's see, how can I make, how can I do that? From these oils, uh, perfumes are made. Okay, or from these oils, perfumes are manufactured. Okay, mm -hmm. something like that. All right, uh, but in this in this particular instance, we would need the word and. Okay. All right, number two. Number two is for Edith. Okay, teacher. Uh, this is unlikely that a nation could choose war if it goes peacefully. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll, we'll have met. Okay, let's try this out. Okay, it is unlikely that a nation would choose war if its goals would have met peacefully. Okay, what do you guys think? Is our answer D? I'd say A. Okay, one for A. I, I think it's B. One for B? B. Two for B? Yes, boy. <laughs> Okay, B is a boy. So I have one on A, two on B. Anybody else? Okay, let's try out A, B, and D once again. A sounds like this. Uh, it is unlikely that a nation would choose war if its goals meet peacefully. Okay, B sounds like this. It is unlikely that a nation would choose war if its goals could be met peacefully. And D, one more time. What's that? No, go ahead. Please. Okay. okay. Uh, D D is uh, it is unlikely that a nation would choose war if its goals would have met peacefully. Okay. What do you guys What do you guys think? Anybody want to change their answer? Yeah, me. I would switch from A to B. Okay, A to B. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, our answer is B. Hmm. Okay, uh, it is unlikely that a nation would choose war if its goals could be met peacefully. Okay, uh, now um, would have would have met. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's unlikely that a nation would have chosen war if its goals would have. Now we would need uh, been been met peacefully. Would have been met peacefully. Okay, so we're missing missing a little bit. Plus, our our the structure of the sentence itself is uh, does not fit it. Okay, uh, number three. Number three is for uh, let's see, Eric. Okay, many English were opposed to the American revolution of twenty. Uh, uh, 1776 moved to Canada where they were known as United Empire Loyalists. Hmm. Many English. Who were settlers, settlers were opposed to the American Revolution of 1776. 17, um, 1776 uh, moved to Canada where they were known as United Empire Rally. Okay, let's uh, let's try that out. Um, so many many English who were settlers were opposed to the American Revolution of 1776 moved to Canada where they were known as United Empire Loyalists. Okay, what do you guys think? Is our answer C? I think it's the D. Okay, D, one on D. I am between C and D. Okay. Uh, so, um, a half person on both C and D. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think it's no A to be T. 
it's you said it's no way to be C. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Let's try out D and C. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Um, many and this is D. <clears throat> Uh, many English settler, uh, sorry, many many English settlers who were opposed to the American Revolution of 1776 moved to Canada, where they were known as United Empire Loyalists. Okay, C again is many English who were settlers were opposed to the American Revolution of 1776 moved to Canada, where they were known as United Empire Loyalists. Okay, I choose D. Okay. Anybody else want to change? Amparo just made herself. <laughs> okay. I, I would change too. I would, change. I would move to to D. Too. Okay. Yes. All right. D. Our answer. Our answer is D. Okay. Ma many English settlers who were opposed to the American Revolution of 1776. Okay. All right. Uh, very nice. Let's go to <clears throat> um, number four. Okay, number four, this is for Federico. From 1946 to 1949, William Harry Estes served as governor of the Virgin Island Islands. Uh, I, I think... Um, the lawyer, A. All right. Okay, so from 1946 to 1949, the lawyer William Henry Hasty served as governor of the Virgin Islands. Okay, what do you guys think? A? I think I agree. I agree. Two, three. C. Okay, anybody else? C. One on C, four a. on A, five on A. Okay, all right, let's try out C, okay? Uh, from 1946 to 1949, the lawyer who, William Henry Hasty served as governor of the Virgin Islands. Okay, mm. A, again, <clears throat> is, from 1946 to 1949, the lawyer, William Harry, goodness, William Henry Hasting, Hasty, uh, served as governor of the Virgin Islands. Okay, does anybody want to change their answer? A. A? A, A. Okay, our answer is A. Mm -hmm. Okay, adding who there would be incorrect. Okay, number five. Uh, number five is for Heidi. Welcome, Heidi. Hello. In sculpture, I'm modeling the uh, denotes a way of shaping uh, clay works or uh, other. Uh, hmm? What? Pliable. Pliable. Pliable materials. Pliable materials. Hmm, let's go. Two term. D. Okay. D to term. Okay, let's try this out. In in sculpture to term modeling. Uh, sorry, in sculpture to term modeling denotes a way of shaping clay, wax, or other pliable materials. Okay, what do you guys think is our answer D? I would say C. C. I, I think it's C. Okay, think, three on C. I think C. I think Four C. on C. C. Okay, five on C. All right, let's try out C. C. Um, uh, okay, six on C. So, uh, in sculpture, the the term modeling denotes a way of shaping clay, wax, or other pliable materials. Okay, D again is in sculpture to term modeling denotes a way of shaping clay, wax, or other pliable materials. If there is a comma after a sculpture, it may be C, but there are no a comma. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the answer is C. Okay, um, yeah. Sometimes uh, on this website they uh, they miss uh, miss a comma here or there. Okay, oh. uh, but even even if there if there is no comma, uh, it it would not be two term. Okay, when you're talking about two term, they would be like uh, carrying a child, carrying a child two term, meaning that uh, carrying it uh, a child for nine months uh, in the womb. 
Okay, that would be carrying a child to term. Okay, but here we're talking about the term or the word, the word uh, modeling. Okay, that's what that's what that means, the word or the term. Okay. All right, very good. Let's, uh, let's see here. We should be okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what What is the meaning of the player? Uh, pliable. Uh, pliable, bendable, bendable, something that's soft. Okay, so um, uh, mud, mud is pliable, but it's not, uh, I mean, it's not really considered pliable, but it is soft. Gold, for example, gold is actually a pliable metal, it's really soft. Okay, something like that. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, let's uh, go to our next set. All right, number six. Number six is for uh, Nacho. Also, adult education in the United, United States began in colonial times. Uh, shift growth has taken place since the 1920s. Uh, uh, I think it's A. Its chief growth has taken place since 1920s. Okay, let's try this out. Although adult education in the United States began in colonial times, its chief growth, growth has taken place since the 1920s. Okay, what do you guys think? Yes, A. I agree on that. It should be subject. Okay, so I have two, two on, two on A. Anybody else? A. Okay, three on A. Okay, anybody else? Okay, all right. A A is correct here. Okay. Although adult edu education in the United States began in, in colonial times, its chief growth has taken place. Um, I don't agree with the word since. Has taken place. Um, eh, yeah, since since the 1920s. Yeah, it'd be fine. Um, yeah. So A, A is good. Okay. Um, number seven. Number seven. This is for Tarek. Okay. A sizable uh, gra uh, ge geographic area. It. Uh, constitutes uh, uh, a biome uh, that a group uh, of plants and animals uh, occupies a group of plants and animals occupying a group of plants oh. and animals occupies when a group of plants and animals occupies when when a group uh, of plants and animals occupies a sizable geographic area no it's <laughs> okay yeah this word here is pronounced occupy so you want to go with when occupy uh, occupies occupy all right so is your answer d mm. uh, yes okay okay d. Okay, let's try it out. When a group, uh, when a group of plants and animals occupies a sizable, sizable geographic area, it constitutes a biome. Yes. Okay. One on D. Anybody else? Two. D. D. Three. D. Four. D. Five. All right. Good. Yes, our answer is D. Okay. Good. Number eight. Number eight. This is for Amparo. Amparo, are you there? Uh-oh. Uh, you are muted. There you go. No, I don't know what happened. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the present drugs uh, historically have been known to be addictive or called narcotics 
like a letter B, which. Okay. Let's try this out. Uh, depressant drugs, which historically have been known to be addictive, are called narcotics. What do you guys think? Is our answer B? B. Blue. B. Okay. Very good. Very good. B. <laughs> Everyone's like B. Okay. B is in blue, right, Amparo? Okay. So so. <laughs> Very good. Let's go to number nine. Just <laughs> Eddie, number nine, please. Me? Okay, yes, teacher. Uh, Although the uh, Eddie. Is... Yes. I, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, someone, uh, someone else uh, jumped in and, and thought I was... I said... Okay. So th yeah. that's why I said no. So yeah, it's a, it, it's your turn. Don't worry. You're, you're okay. Go ahead. Okay, teacher. Although the weather in Marta's vineyard isn't to have a year-round tourist season, it has become a favorite summer. Summer, I can see, teacher. Uh, the word is resort. The favorite summer oh, resort. Okay. okay, summer resort. Um. Good enough. B. Okay. So B. All right, let's try it out. Although the weather in Martha's Vineyard isn't good enough to have a year-round tourist season, it has become a favorite uh, summer resort. What do you guys think? Is our answer B? B. Yes. One? Two? Yes. C. C. Okay, three and one on C? Yes. C. On B, five on B. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at uh, C and uh, B. Okay, so C sounds like this. Although the weather in Martha's Vineyard isn't good as enough to a year-round uh, year-round tourist season, it has become a favorite summer resort. Okay, uh, B again sounds like this. Although the weather in Martha's Vineyard isn't good enough to have a year-round tourist season, it has become a favorite summer resort. Okay? Anybody want to change their answer? No, B. Okay. All right, our answer is B. Okay? It is B. So, um, as good as, um, you'd have to have as in front of good. Okay, as good as others. So even though, uh, even though, or although the weather in Martha's Vineyard isn't as good as other resorts during uh, during the year, um, it has become a favorite summer resort. Okay, so you'd have to have as, okay, in front of good, and you would not uh, need enough. Okay, um, number ten. Number ten. This is for Eric. Thank you. Stud Sturkel has used what he learned when he was a radio talk show host to produce step over histories of people and events. C. Okay, so C, let's try this out. Um, Studs Turkel was uh, so let's see let me mark that studs turkle was you wa, has used what he learned when he was on a radio talk sh was he when he was a radio talk show host to produce taped oral histories of people and events okay what do you guys think is our answer c c one on c c two on c anybody else Okay, our answer is C. That is correct. Okay, now uh, Tarek, I I just saw your your question here. Uh, so you're asking about this last one. Isn't as good as two? Uh, no, um, no, we couldn't uh, we couldn't plug uh, as good as two to have. Okay, because you have to compare the weather 
the weather at Martha's Vineyard to something else. Okay, and here uh, you can't compare it to have a year-round tourist season. So it would be, although the weather in Martha's Vineyard isn't as good as the weather in old in uh, oh, drunk, golly, in other um, sorry, my Spanish leaked out of my brain. Um, in other um, uh, in in other resorts around the 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 world or around the United States. Okay, it has become a favorite summer resort. So the only way to use that, you use as good as when you're comparing two things. Okay. All right, so you'd have to compare the weather. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, nice job, you guys. Let's go to our next one. Okay, number eleven. Number eleven is for Federico. The the bombardier battle gets uh, its name because uh, it's prey with caustic liquid. All right, what do you think our answer is? Uh, I think uh, B, but I'm not sure. Okay, let's try B. Uh, the Bombardier Beetle gets its name because of it shoots its prey with caustic liquid. Okay, what do you guys think? Is our answer B? C. C, one for C? Uh, yes, C. Two for C? C. Four, four for C? A. One for A. <laughs> A and C. Half and half. Okay. A, B, and C. All right. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's try this out. Okay. Uh, A is first. The Bombardier Beetle gets its name because shooting its prey with caustic liquid. B is the Bombardier Beetle gets its name because of it shoots its prey with caustic liquid. C is the Bombardier Beetle gets its name because it shoots its prey with caustic li liquid. I would say C. C? C. C. Anybody else want to change their answer? Okay, our answer is C. Okay. Now, um, in some cases, yes, you do need the word or the preposition of after because. Okay, but you do not need it all the time. Okay, you do not need it all the time. Okay, so you were close there. Uh, number 12. Number 12, this is for Heidi. Uh, one of the professor's greatest attributes is uh, the way to give lectures. Letter C. Okay, so letter C. Uh, one of the professor's greatest attributes is the way to give lectures. What do you guys think? Is our answer C? I would say D. Is one on D. To lecture. Okay. D. Two on D. Anybody else? All right, let's try uh, D and C again, okay? So, um, D sounds like this. One of the professor's greatest attributes is his ability to lecture. All right, C again is one of the professor's greatest attributes is the way to give lectures. Okay, anybody want to change their answer? All right, our answer here is D. Okay. If you want to say the way, you would have to say the way he gives lectures. The way he gives lectures. Okay. If not, it would be his ability to lecture. All right. Okay, let's go to number 13. Number 13 is for Nacho. Yes. 
green and magenta are complementary colors located opposite each other on the color wheel. I think, oof, I don't know, but I, I'm going to choose the letter C. And see blue and yellow. Okay. All right, let's try it out. Okay, so green and magenta are complementary colors located opposite each other on the color wheel. And so blue and yellow do. Okay, what do you guys think? Is our answer C? D and as in dog. D as in dog, one? Maybe D. Two on D? Anybody else? Okay, let's try out D. Green and magenta are complementary colors located opposite each other on the color wheel, and so are blue and yellow. C again sounds like this. Green and magenta are complementary colors uh, uh, located opposite each other on the color wheel, and so blue and yellow do. Okay, anybody want to change their answer? Okay, our answer is D. Okay, the answer is D. Those who answered it right will receive chocolate chip cookies delivered to their house tonight. So look for them. They are on their way. All right, number 14. Number 14 is for Tarek. The chairman, all right. Then all the other board members. Um, the Ernest, uh, earlier, uh, the uh, D. Earlier. Okay. The chairman arrived uh, earlier than all the other board members. All right. What do you guys think? Is our answer D? D. Yes. D. One, yeah. two, three, four. Anybody else? D. Okay. Very nice. Our answer is D. Okay. All right. Let's go to um, number 15. This is for Amparo. Sorry, teacher. Is possible to say more early? Um, more early? No. The reason why is because when when you have a word that that has one syllable, oh, okay, okay, you would say you would give the ending er. If it has one syllable plus it ends with a y, we change the y to an i and add er. So that would be earlier. Okay. okay. Unless it's okay. Unless though. Unless it is an adverb. Okay, so if we had the word, for example, oh, quickly. Okay. If we had the word quickly, mm -hmm. all right, he, he ran more quickly than the others. We would not say quicklier. Okay, mm -hmm. it would be more quickly. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Uh, number 15, this is for Amparo. The examiner made us our identification in order to be admitted to the test center. Um, B, show. Okay. All right. Um, the examiner made us show our identification in order to be admitted to the test center. What do you guys think is our answer? B, show. I'm going to choose the letter D. Okay. D. A. D. 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 Okay. Two on two on D, one on A. Anybody B. else? B. Okay. One B. on B, one on A, two on D. I think was that three on D? Did I hear it? Okay. All right. Let's try E and. D is in dog. Okay. So A sounds like this. The examiner made us showing our identification in order to be admitted to the test center. Okay. B again sounds like this. The examiner made us show our identification in order to be admitted to the test center. D sounds like this. The examiner made us to show our identification in order to be admitted to the test center. Okay. Does anybody want to change their answer?
Nope. Okay. Uh, our answer is B. Made a show. We would not need the preposition to here, or we would not need to use the uh, the verb in its infinitive form. Made a show. Okay. Right here. Okay. Made a show. Okay. Um, very good. Okay. Let's uh, let's continue here. All right, number 16. There we go. Okay, number 16, this is for Edith. Okay, teacher. The professor said that... <laughs> um, the student come to our they report on the Monday? No, on Monday. Mm. Oh, let us see. Okay. Let's try this here. The professor said that the students could hand in their reports on Monday. What do you guys think? Is our answer C? I think C. Okay, one on C. Yes. Two on C. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, I can hear you now. Yes, I, I said C also. Okay, three on C. C. Four on C. And Amparo said she said C before, but she was just waiting for Nacho to say his answer because she didn't know. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. Like, oh, oh, can you hear me now? Oh, sorry. Yes, I, I'll say C as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, our answer, our answer here is C. Nice job, you guys. Very good. Um, let's go to number seventeen. Uh, this is for Eric. Thank you. Seventeen. Um, to use pigeons for observation purposes on sea rescue missions. It's planned to use pigeons for observation purposes on sea rescue missions. Okay, A. let's try that out. A. It is planned to use pigeons for observation purposes on sea rescue missions. What do you guys think? Is our answer A? Yes. Okay, one on A. <laughs> yes, A. Okay, two on A. I know which one, one is, some of you guys are thinking. Okay, anybody else? Okay, our answer is A. Okay, it would not be is okay it would not be as planned okay that's uh, that's what I hear a lot of uh, a lot of students say okay but just remember okay in most cases okay um, it, you would need it front there it is planned okay so here we go let's go to number 18 Number 18 is for Federico. In the 1960s, due in part to the invention of air conditioning, the population of the United States a dramatic geographical shift southward. Um, Experienced. Okay. okay, let's try this out. In the 1960s, due in part to the invention of air conditioning, the population of the United States experienced a dramatic uh, geographical shift southward. Okay, what do you guys think? Is our answer yeah. D? Yes. I agree on that. D. Two on D, three on D. Anybody else? Four on D? D. Uh, did you say B or D? B is in boy? No, B the dog. 
D is in dog. Five. <laughs> Five on D. There we go. Okay, good. Our answer is D. This is correct. And this is absolutely correct. Okay, and really in Arizona, which is one of the hottest places in the United States, which is where I grew up, uh, we did not have very many people there um, until more and more air conditioners started being installed in the 80s. And now the place is massive because you can live there okay, with air conditioning okay, uh, because it gets hot. It gets really hot. Okay, uh, let's go to number 19. Number 19, this is four. Um, okay, Federico, you did 18. So Heidi, number 19, please. After seeing the movie uh, Centennial, 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 mm -hmm. uh, many people wanted to read, read this book. Let us see. Okay, let's check it out. So after seeing the movie Centennial, many people wanted to read this book. What do you guys think? Is our answer C? I agree on that. Yes. Okay, one, two. C. Anybody else? Three? C. Four, five. Okay, all right, good. Our answer is C. Okay, nice job. Nice job, you guys. Okay, number 20. Number 20, this is for Nacho. Number 20. Jane changed her mayor from French to business. Layer of D, hoping to find that job more easily. Okay. All right. Jane changed her major from French to business, hoping to find a job more easily. What do you guys think? Is our answer D? D. Okay. One? D. Yes. D. Two? Three? B. Boy? I, boy. D. Okay. B is in boy. D. Four on D. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, let's check out B and we'll check out C. Okay, again. Okay, so B sounds like this Jane changed her major from French to business, hoping she can easier get a job. D is Jane, Jane. Wow, that's a hard one. Jane changed. <laughs> Jane changed her major from French to business, hoping to find a job more easily. Okay, anybody want to change their answer? Okay, our answer is D. Okay, mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to use this uh, type or this form, um, Jane changed her major from French to business, hoping she could find a job more easily. Okay. Okay, would probably be the best way to say that. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Very nice. Okay, you guys, let's find another uh, series of tests here. Okay. All right. Um, okay, who did number 20? Was that uh, – Heidi, did you do number 20? No. Um, I you did 20, is that Nacho? Yes. Okay, so Patricia, how you doing Patricia? Welcome. Patricia, are you there? Uh-oh, okay, let's go to Tarek. Okay. Tarek, number one. Okay, a continuous mass of water on the earth, the surface, all continuous, uh, contain, contain, our uh, our uh, island in the strict in the strict the strictest uh, sense of the word. Uh, the phone. Uh, sense of phone.
I think uh, mm, B. Okay. All right, let's try it out. Since the oceans form a continuous mass of water on the Earth's surface, all continents are islands in the strictest sense of the word. What do you guys think? Is our answer B? Yes. One, yeah, two, yes. three, yes, four, five. Pew, pew. All right, good, all right. Okay, you guys are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, B is correct. Nice job. Okay, number two. Number two is for, let's see, Patricia, are you with us? Nope, okay, let's go to Amparo. Amparo number two, please. In the late uh, 1800s, Helen Richards began work in the new field of sanitary science, which was concerned oops, with uh, waste removal, water pur purification, and the adequate ventilation. Okay, let's try that out. In the late 1800s, Ellen Richards began, uh, began work on the new field of sanitary science, which was concerned with waste removal, water purification, and adequate ventilation. What do you guys think? Is there answer B? Yes. Mm -hmm. B. Two? Boy. Three? Okay, anybody else? I have three on B. B. Four? Okay, good. Our answer is B. All right, nice job. Let's go to number three. Number three is for Edith. Okay, teacher. Uh, his invention showed the understood what was going to happen in the future and proved he was on, of his time. Mm. Before. Okay. This one's a little tricky because you have to know how we say it. Okay. Um, Alright, mm. so uh, his invention showed that he understood what was going to happen in the future and proved he was before of his time. Okay, what do you guys think? Is our answer B, before? C, ahead. C, I, I think C. Okay, so that's three on C, one on A. Anybody else? Okay, let's try A and C, and we'll try B again as well. All right, um, A sounds like this. In his, in, sorry, uh, his invention showed that he understood what was going to happen in the future and proved he was in front of his time. B again is, his invention showed that he understood what was going to happen in the future and proved he was before of his time. C is, his invention showed that he understood what was going to happen in the future and proved he was ahead of his time. What do you guys think? Anybody want to change their answer? No. Okay. Uh, the answer is C, ahead. Okay, ahead of his time. Okay, this is, uh, this is uh, more of a saying that we, that we have. Okay, you can be before... Um, before his time. Okay, that was that's before his time. Okay, uh, but that means uh, that it came, um, it came before he he existed. Okay, like kids these days, a typewriter they won't know what a typewriter is. That's before their time. Okay, but uh, uh, a lot of people thought that uh, Steve Jobs was ahead of his time with all of the gadgets and the inventions that he was thinking up. 
okay? Meaning that he's in one place and he was thinking of inventions that were more in the future, okay? All right, let's go to number four. Okay, number four is for Eric. Okay, thank you. The oldest city in the States, Vancouver, Washington, was founded by the Hudson Bay Company in the early 19th century. Okay. So you said C here. Um, okay, the oldest, the oldest city in the state, Vancouver, Washington, was founded by Hudson Bay's company in the early 19th century. Okay, what do you guys think? Is our answer C? One? Yes, I agree. Yes, I agree. Two? I agree. Okay, three? No, I, I, don't, I don't think it's that it will be C. Uh, you don't think it's uh, A, B, C, or D? It's not C. Okay. Which one would it be? I think... Uh, uh, maybe A? Okay, A. Let's, uh, let's take a listen to it. Okay. The oldest city in the state, the Hudson Bay's company founded founded Vancouver, Washington in the early in the early 19th century. Okay, um, C again sounds like this: the oldest city in the state, Vancouver, Washington, was founded by the Hudson Bay's company. Uh, sorry, the Hudson's the Hudson's Bay Company in the early 19th century. Okay, our answer is C. Okay, that is correct. All right. Uh, okay, let's see here. Let's go to number five. Number five is for Federico. Became a state in 1876. Colorado B. Okay. All right, Colorado became a state in 1876. What do you guys think? D. Okay, did someone say D as in dog? No, B. 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 Okay. B, two on B. Anybody else? B. Three on B? B. B. Four on B? Five? All right. Good, good. Uh, this is correct. B. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can get through uh, a handful more. Okay, number six. Number six is for, let's see, Heidi. The human brain only 2% of young adults would be Um, okay. Do you want to hear? Do you want to hear both of them? Yeah. Okay. So C. Let's try this out. The human brain makes it up only two percent of an, an adult's body weight. Okay. okay. What do you guys think? I said okay. yeah. Not Me? I. Not I didn't say C. I said oh, you did. I thought you said uh, I have a choice between, I can't choose between C and D. I thought you said C. Did you not say C? No, I didn't say C. I oh, okay. All right. Uh, let's try out D then. Okay, D sounds like this. The human brain makes up only 2% of an adult's bo body weight. Okay, we had a couple of people already say D. Anybody else? Yeah. D. Okay, three on D. Yes, B. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, very good. Our answer is D. Okay, let's do one more, you guys. Number seven. Number seven, this is for Nacho. Number seven. The Disney amusement park in Japan is Florida or California. Is uh, 
larger than the ones in Florida or California. Okay, let's try that out. The Disney, the Disney amusement park in Japan is larger than the ones in Florida or California. Okay, what do you guys think? Is our answer B? Yes. One? Okay, anybody else? I have one on B. B, B. Two on B? B. Three on B? B. Okay, B. Okay, is someone saying D is in dog? Or B is in boy? B. Boy. Okay. Both of them. <laughs> All right, our answer our answer is B. Okay, the larger one, larger, sorry, larger than the ones in Florida uh, or California. Okay. All right, you guys, uh, nice work today. We had some uh, easy ones and we had some challenging ones. Um, very nice. Okay. Well, I'm going to take a break until uh, uh, until tonight. Uh, I have my uh, reading class and then another beginner's class. Okay. All right, you guys. Thanks for yeah, coming thank in. We'll see you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.